For this week's video, I am going to be talking about the Grand Theft Auto characters. And these are the main protagonists for Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5. So we've got uh, Nico Bellic over here on the left. And we've got Franklin, then Michael, and wrapping up on Trevor. Um, these are model rips. I'm, I'm fairly sure they're from the game. These are <laughs> pretty cool to get your hands on and um, look through. If you're someone like me anyway. What am I going to do? I'm going to give a little context into what we're actually looking at. Some cool things about this and some things to consider. GTA 4 came out four years after San Andreas. It came out in 2008. It was a generational leap from the console cycle before. GTA 5 came out five years after Grand Theft Auto 4 in 2013. And what you should expect is a refinement on, you know, making assets. We're talking about, in this context, edge loops, topology, uh, all that kind of stuff, silhouette. The differences of those games, mainly, when you're talking about character models, are really, what are the differences in these two games? Like, what are they put through differently in each game? And so Nico was quite straightforward character in the city you could swap out clothes outfits that kind of stuff nothing too crazy water was not an element that you could interact with in grand theft auto 4. one very large thing that they uh had in grand theft auto 4 was the euphoria animation system but these are not uh you know these wouldn't break tradition in terms of what kind of movement sets that he has and animations that he can do Everything's fairly sanded, walking, running. It, it just looks much better. So it's just a more advanced movement system rather than pushing uh, beyond realistic movement. And so these Grand Theft Auto V models are really um, polish, I think. it's These two games are released on the same console generation. What I will get into is showing you how similar they are in some respects and how different they are in others. And so the differences should be, again, refinement. They're, they're really just ironing out kinks. You know, these aren't huge changes in terms of asset creation. I think they had a very good understanding of asset creation going into Grand Theft Auto 4. And yeah, let's, let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so base poly counts. This is what, you know, on paper, a lot of people talk about. These consoles were very much polygon bound, um, unlike you know modern PCs nowadays. So polygon count is, is of a concern. So we have Nico at 19,000-ish, Franklin pushing 25,000, Michael 31,000, and Trevor at 26,000. And bear in mind, these are kind of rough ideas you can, again, swap out clothing. You can change appearances. You know, there is a range here. You can see that it's roughly 20, 30,000. And each of those items of clothing would follow that kind of same resolution. Nothing, nothing too crazy. If we look at polygon distribution, check out these head, head models. So Nico stands in at 7,600 uh, polygons. A triangle, sorry, around his head. And then we have these Grand Theft Auto V characters, which are much larger. We're talking almost double. Um, so Franklin, 12,000. Michael at 17,000. And Trevor at, you know, 15,500. Pretty big improvement here. Um, we, remember, we're just looking at models. So this is probably an improvement on just facial articulation in general. So I think if I was to have a look at the rigs, um, like each character rig, I'm, I'm sure that the Grand Theft Auto V are far more advanced than 4. And well, just looking at the models, you can see that they're way more advanced. So what are the differences? Grand Theft Auto V characters are largely a refinement, as I mentioned earlier. The proportions are much more realistic, better deformation. Check out this um, pinch type loop technique I think this is like quite a, uh, a revelation in terms of like what would you call it deformation and really a, a more dynamic type of deformation 
which is kind of cool. So you can see it here in Michael's elbow, and then again used in Trevor, uh, in, in his pants, the in the knees. So wherever there's this one directional, or sorry, one axis deformation, you can see that there is a version of this kind of uh, polygon loop. This is something that I noticed and have used in some games I've worked on, which is really cool. <laughs> I could probably talk about it a little more, but the idea is if you place a joint in the center, these two edge loops, because they're spaced out so far, they end up actually deforming themselves from each other and they will never actually collapse into themselves, if, if that makes sense, uh, because the pivot is, you know, off. The hand UVs are much more improved. Check out Nico's, where each of the fingers are unwrapped. And then we have a look at the Grand Theft Auto V characters, and you can see it's really just the palm, the back of the back of the hand, you got the thumb, and one finger. <laughs> because look look at how they do it on Nico's, you know, on, on Nico on Grand Theft Auto 4. It's really just, you know, copy and paste. And so this is one of those things um, I talked about in the last video. When you know the resolution you're making assets to, you can min-max it. And um, this is one really cool thing I like to see executed for a game like Grand Theft Auto V. All characters, you know, use a form. Like th this is basically the base hand model and they just use it for everyone. Kinda, and then they will, you know, make different normal maps and different proportions here and there. But all well, the loops are very much defined here. And also, Grand Theft Auto V does a thing. I'm, I'm not sure what the industry calls this. I've been calling it or referring to it as blending normal maps. So, you know, when a character turns, you can see here on Trevor, you know, he can, his shirt will crinkle a different direction, uh, which is really cool. This is something I saw like in, in their trailers, you can see just in a walk animation, clothes fold direction changing. And then again here with Michael, you can see his, um, you know, forehead wrinkles turn on and off. <laughs> this kind of stuff is really cool because the geo can only go so far and then base normal maps. In order to produce wrinkles like this would mean, you know, either a, a much more high fidelity character mesh, which is far more than what this generation demanded um, so doing this kind of thing where these Grand Theft Auto V characters load up, you know, two or three different normal maps and actually mask between them and, and um, you know, blend them in and out based on the animations they're performing is the way to go about doing it. Um, so the, the, the GTA V characters are really the same as the Grand Theft Auto IV, which is no surprise, should, should be no surprise. Resolutions pushed a little more. Yeah, so some tidbits. Let's talk about some uh, a couple of tidbits that I noticed while having a look at these models. Modeling the eye highlights. <laughs> and so this was very much done on Grand Theft Auto 4 and used again in Grand Theft Auto 5. So why would you even do this? Uh, the, the argument for it is that the rendering, the real-time rendering that you then rely on to render you know, the bulk of the game, the fidelity of it is not enough to actually pick up on these highlights. And the highlights are so important that without them, you would have these dull <laughs> eyes, basically. I guess Rockstar felt like, because the rendering wasn't gonna improve, you know, a whole bunch, let's just go ahead and model these things on and just like, you know, animate it with the eye. And, and that's why it's there. That's, that's, that's my guess anyway. Let's have a look at these um, eyes, the, these eye textures. So. In Grand Theft Auto 4, you've got the head, okay, it's unwrapped, you can see it here. You can see the eyes just in this bottom left corner here. And if we look at any of the Grand Theft Auto 5 characters, the eye is missing. So why so why would you why would you move the eyes from the head uh, texture map and put it on its own? You can see here in the GTA 5 characters that it is now moved onto this map called Teeth. T-E-E-F, and it includes the teeth and eyelashes. So why would you move it? Because the skin shades with subsurface, I bet they didn't want to include subsurface on the eyeballs. And because gloss values are so high and very different from 
the head skin values, it just makes sense to pack these together and actually have higher gloss values or well, specular values in, in this day. Yeah, it just, just makes sense to, to disconnect them. You, you don't need subsurface on eyeballs. You need higher spec values on eyeballs. So just pack them in with teeth. <laughs> teeth have, you know, fairly high spec value. One thing I was surprised about was even the teeth maps are done differently. Have a look at Michael's and now have a look at Franklin's or Trevor's. So Franklin and Trevor are similar, but Michael's is different. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's quite interesting because you, get, you, you have like an iris halved. You, you also have this iris disconnected on Trevor and Franklin. So <laughs> it, which, which is really just pushing um, iris resolution larger than, than what it would be, you know, if, if it was just to be an explicit kind of thing, which is, I think, interesting again. <laughs> I, I think all these choices that were made are uh, not obvious. If you, if you asked any, like, student studying this kind of stuff, they probably would have just unwrapped it, you know, uh, like, completely unwrapped it. But I, I love how resourceful these maps are and that they would do such a thing like this. And uh, the, the final thing is that, you know, normally when you have eye uh, normal maps, texture maps, whatever, the eye has like a very pronounced uh, negative curvature that you can actually see on the normal map. It's like a concaved shape. And, and the reason why they do this is it emulates um, this divot that you see on the eyeball. Um, and so what's really surprising here is that this inversion of the iris is um, not captured. And not only is it not captured, it's entirely flat in the um, Grand Theft Auto V characters, in all of them. And so <laughs> I, I just think that's a, a really interesting detail because many other games would actually include it. It's just surprising for me to see that. Uh, that that these eyeballs would be flat. So in summary, sadly, Grand Theft Auto V marks the end of the seventh generation console assets. We all know Red Dead Redemption 2 follows, and because of the generational leap, the, the techniques used in order to make these assets, the Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5 assets, and replaced with a completely different way to make assets. The seventh generation character models for me are a true representation of when games needed to do the many smoke and mirror techniques to sell characters. Min-maxing polygons to get the best out of every triangle rendered. So I'm <laughs> I'm a little sad to to see the um, modeling, the video game modeling techniques pull away from that and into their newer forms, but you know, it, it makes for better assets, obviously, going forward. And with the modern hardware uh, uh, being the way it is, you can you can throw all the bells and whistles at these uh, new modern video game uh, protagonists. Um, but there's definitely a lot here, I feel, that can be included, you know, and can be used in order to uh, get the best out of character models for video games. Thank you very much and catch you next time.